Scott Rawls has come a long way from his days as Breckenridge's Banana Man to his fifth Olympic freestyle coaching assignment at the 2018 Games in South Korea. He has traveled over a million miles to be on the side of a mountain, competing, promoting, or coaching at the highest level. Rawls was born in Libby, Montana, learning to ski at Turner Mountain, which boasts of its mile-long T-bar and a 2,100-foot vertical drop. Following high school, he decided to follow his skiing passion, moving to Breckenridge in 1979 and securing a lease on an old log cabin on Ridge Street. He was soon followed by his two brothers, Kirk and Mike, and the Rawls boys began the pursuit of professional skiing careers on the Pro Mogul Tour. Scott grew up with great parents, uh, Jerry and Susie Rawls, and they were, part, they were a big skiing family, and I think that's what helped Scott and the brothers get to where they were today. All the brothers skied with each other and against each other in the Pro Mogul Tour back in the 80s and 90s, and I think that each one of them pushed each other to get to their status of greatness. You know, we grew up chasing each other around pretty much, you know, and we all got better because one of us would do one thing and then the third guy would do something and then you'd have to do something as well. And so our, you know, we kind of leapfrogged each other as we learned how to ski. And we were competitive, but we were fun. We actually relished in the fact that somebody would try a new trick because that means we would have to step up our game. His Banana Man moniker stems from a Sunday yard sale that netted him a 25 cent jacket that would earn him his nickname. Come opening day, Rawls skied hard in a full-length denim jacket adorned with, guess what, bananas. As people began to notice, the jacket became everyday skiing attire. His brothers and their friends were also buying crazy suit jackets to ski in as well. And as Scott says, it was gaper day every day. And that's Scott. Despite the attire, Scott enjoyed a standout career on the tour from 1981 to 1994 racking up seven career wins, 20 podiums, and five top three overall pro mogul season rankings. Following successful competitive and modeling careers, the brothers were responsible for helping to develop 42 different events that were televised via regional sports networks, ESPN, MTV, and network television. One of, one of Scott's biggest victories was actually here in Vail. He got into the finals against the guy that had won the tour championship, Cameron Boyle. And I, th I think that was probably one of the most rewarding ones that he had had. And it was, it was interesting too, because I was running the World Pro Mogul Tour, our announcer had gotten sick. So they're like, hey, Kirk, you need to come and announce. I announced his win and I interviewed him in the finish area. Scott's passion for competition soon spilled over into coaching and he helped to develop the Team Breckenridge Freestyle Program, first as a mogul coach and then as a program director from 1989 to 2001. Along with his colleague, John Dowling, Team Breck had 14 athletes qualify for the U.S. Freestyle Ski Team. And soon after, his success landed him a position on the U.S. Freestyle Coaching Staff. When he decided to start coaching, seeing how his relationship to the athletes, he found a way to relate to each one of the athletes and then just to watch him rise up through the ranks and then to finally see him on national TV during the Olympics standing up at the top of the mogul course. <laughs> it, was, it was quite an amazing uh, adventure for him, I'm sure, to go from just being the local ski bum in Breckenridge to uh, being the, the head coach for the best mogul team in the world. He was always positive. He was always ready to go. He loved skiing. He loved being out there. He loved being in the mountains. He loved the job that took him to some of the great ski resorts in the world. And, you know, he could coach some of the great athletes. I mean, he, he loved everything about it. During the course of his coaching tenure with the national team, Scott guided them at five world championships, resulting in 20 medals and four different world champions in both moguls and dual moguls. Under his direction, the U.S. Freestyle Team captured the Nations Cup in 2010, 12, and 13, and Scott was named USSA International Coach of the Year on three different occasions. A very remarkable feat in itself. During his leadership at four Olympic Games with the U.S. team, he and his athletes brought home seven medals, including 2002 silver medalist Travis Mayer and Shannon Barkey, 2006 bronze medalist Toby Dawson, 2010 gold medalist Hannah Kearney, and bronze medalists Barkey and Brian Wilson. In 2014, Rawls moved on from the U.S. team after 14 very successful years, only to be quickly recruited by the Chinese mobile team as their head coach. 
he had two athletes qualify for the 2018 Games in Pyeongchang, his fifth and final Winter Olympic coaching assignment. You know, whether Scott was skiing as an athlete or as a promoter during a tour or, or coaching people to, to Olympic medals, you know, he never forgets about how skiing is so much fun. Scott would go skiing for the last hour or two by himself or, you know, he always knew somebody, so he'd pick up some old friend somewhere and he'd just ski and ski and ski and it was always fun and I, I think that's the root of everything we do and I'm not sure anyone says it better than Scott Rawls. Scott is a great ambassador for Colorado from Mongolia to Maine. Every time he travels, he takes a piece of Colorado with him and then brings the world back to Colorado. Whether on the Great Wall of China or introducing his new athletes to A Basin, Rawls has Colorado in his heart. He remains the lighthearted, fun-loving, banana man, ski bum that we all aspire to be. So it is with great pleasure that we welcome Scott Rawls to the Colorado Snow Sports Hall of Fame as an honored member of the class of 2020.